Troy, widely celebrated in myth and legend. The city of Ilion stood tall as one of the great citadels of the Aegean Sea. Famously or infamously, it was ultimately destroyed and burned to the ground by the vast Achaean army of 1,000 ships led by King Agamemnon. The Trojan War was perhaps the most legendary conflict of the ancient age, dated to approximately 1200 BCE and passed on by the subsequent generations of Greeks that celebrated their ancestors, which had turned Troy to ashes. Subsequently, Troy held a very prominent place in the ancient Greek tradition, its mythology and epic poetry. Besides legendary king Priam, Greeks recorded a number of his mythological ancestors going back to Tros and his son Ilos, the eponymous founders of the kingdom. Such practice of attaching eponymous rulers to the peoples and kingdoms was standard in Greek mythology, especially in cases which go far into the past, beyond what the Hellenes could recount in their records. After all, Troy did have a long-lasting history of its own, dating deep into the Bronze Age, many centuries before literacy and writing even developed in the area. Unfortunately, most of the historical Trojan rulers are thus lost to history, with only a few of their names preserved in the neighboring Hittite records. Here we talk about the earliest known historical king of Troy, Kukuni. Troy had always been an important Aegean center of the Bronze Age. Its geographic location ensured a prominent place in the trade and supply routes between the Mediterranean and Black Sea. By the late Bronze Age, this wealthy city became one of the most significant kingdoms in the Western Asia Minor, situated between the two great powers of the time, the Mycenaean Greece to its west across the Aegean Sea, and the mighty Hittite Empire to its east in central Anatolia. It is from the Hittite records that we know the names of many of the Western Anatolian rulers, including those of Troy. To the Hittites, Troy or Ilion, was known as Willusa and represented an important player in the regional affairs. Predictably, both Hittites and Mycenaeans constantly fought for control and influence over Willusa as a part of their larger political, diplomatic and sometimes even military struggle in Western Asia Minor. That struggle was especially ongoing during the 14th century BCE, where decades of decline of the Hittite influence allowed regional kingdoms to grow in power, most notably Arzawa, but also Willusa. It is to this period that the Hittite texts date the reign of Kukuni, the first recorded ruler of the Willusan kingdom. Besides being the earliest, Kukuni is also the least attested Trojan king, being only known from a single reference of a later Hittite document, an early 13th century BCE treaty between Muwatali II and one of Kukuni's successors, Alexandu. In the introduction paragraph of the treaty, the Hittite king writes this to the Trojan ruler. Formerly, when my forefather Labarna had conquered all the lands of Arzawa and the land of Willusa, thereafter the land of Arzawa began war, and the land of Willusa defected from Hatti. But because the matter is long past, I do not know from which king. And when the land of Willusa defected from Hatti, its people were indeed at peace with the kings of Hatti from afar, and they regularly sent them messengers. But when Tudhalia came against the land of Arzawa, he did not enter the land of Willusa. It was at peace with him, and regularly sent him messengers. And when the land of Arzawa began war once more, my grandfather Shupiluliuma came and attacked the land of Arzawa. Kukuni, the king of the land of Willusa, was at peace with him, and he did not come against him, but regularly sent messengers to my grandfather Shupiluliuma. 
In this treaty, Muwatali recounts the events of the previous centuries from the Hittite point of view, before reminding the Trojan king of how he helped him in the past, in attempt to ensure that Wilusa would be a loyal ally. Muwatali first alleges that in the distant past, his predecessor Labarna had conquered all of Arzawa and also Vilusa. This claim is questionable at the very least, as it likely refers to the 17th century raid of King Hattushili I, who bore the title name Labarna. However, unlike Muwatali's claims of a grandiose conquest, his predecessor recorded rather a brief campaign, in which he went to the land of Arzawa and took away its cattle and sheep. Hattushili was then quickly forced to turn back and fight an attack from the east, as well as numerous rebellions across the kingdom. He also made no mention of Wilusa, suggesting that Muwatali greatly exaggerated the events. By the time of Kukuni, Shupiluliuma had re-established Hittites as a great power and marched westwards against the kingdom of Arzawa which had previously utilized on Hittite weakness and started seizing territory at the Hittites' expense. Kukuni himself oversaw a period of prosperity and wealth in Troy. His reign corresponds to the archaeological layer of Troy VI, noted for increased Mycenaean influence when it comes to building style and architecture. The improved walls of the Trojan citadel, dating to 1400 BCE perhaps to Kukuni's predecessor, were built in a sawtooth style with 7 and 10 meter segments, joined at shallow angles. This style is consistent with the walls of the Mycenaean citadels. Existence of a Megaron was also recorded, as well as numerous pottery and other artifacts that were manufactured in the Mycenaean style. These characteristics of a strong Mycenaean cultural influence in Wilusa suggest a possible Greek-speaking dynasty in charge of the kingdom. The name Kukuni, being the Hittite language rendering of the name, has been widely hypothesized by the scholars to be Kiknas in the Hellenic language. After all, his successor Alexandu was rather a clear Hittite rendering of the Greek name Alexander. Whatever the case may have been, Kukuni or Kiknas decided not to engage during the imminent Hittite Arzawan War. He reportedly looked favorably upon the Hittites, regularly sending messengers to Shupiluliuma and was acknowledged as an ally by the Hittite rulers. We do not know whether Kukuni did this out of concern of growing Arzawan power in the area, or if it was a pragmatic gamble on who he believed was going to come out victorious. Ultimately, Shupiluliuma managed to defeat the Arzawans and recapture some of the border regions that Hittites had lost in the past. The Hittite Empire was back as a major power broker in the region, and Troy was considered one of their allies. Despite being friendly to the Hittites, Kukuni likely pursued a rather more neutral and pragmatic policy and was not a Hittite vassal, as his successors would soon become. The dates for Kukuni's reign are not known, besides the fact that he was Shupiluliuma's contemporary. It is possible that he passed away towards the latter half of the 14th century BCE. He left behind a wealthy Trojan state, but also a target for the bigger powers, which were soon to bring much instability and destruction to Wilusa.